Okay, we've traveled down a long road talking about the social form of the corporation and seeing it as something which has, shall we say, emancipated itself to a certain degree from human control. And it has a kind of pseudo-life, we might say, a kind of independent existence. It's, it's emancipated itself from the restraint of nation-states and um, it's quite capable because the soul part of it, the corporate culture part of it, has no higher part, no spirit part, no no um, uh, restraint, no guiding temperance, no discipline, no moral heart, you might say. And that um, there are people who think that corporations are very fruitful that contain these things and they will be in favor of corporations. And there are people who have an ideology that's in favor of corporations, whatever corporations do, and they're kind of not, they don't think at all if you've got an ideology. And then you have people who see these corporations doing all this badness. They recognize the sort of inhuman qualities or the, the unbalanced qualities, the fact that the corporation has become very one-sided in a, in a kind of extreme way where the, the qualities of empathy and conscience and desire for substance and restraint and all those kinds of things have been eliminated from the corporate culture that guides the corporation. And now these corporations are in conflict with uh, what the impulse is living in nation states. So here we are, we're, we're Americans, and we're thinking about having a new constitution, and uh, we find ourselves at, at a kind of war with uh, corporations. Now, um, Another way to look at this, to sort of help us appreciate this, uh, well, let's just step off to the side for a minute and take a view from the side uh, at the situation, at the historical situation. Um, one of the things that happened in the history of the development of the United States was that uh, um, the United States came into being in a t at a time when the aristocracies of blood had kind of lost their ability to... Uh, really be fruitful and people didn't want to have them anymore and so um, under impulses like what happened in the American Revolution and the French Revolution the aristocrats were sort of thrown out of power and other forms of governance were established of various kinds and some of these were mixed you know you still have a monarchy in, in England and so on and so forth in other places and, and uh, lots of variety of these things uh, now, what's taught to us in history, which is sort of not true in a way, is, is that, that uh, what emerged was these Western democracies. Well, the fact was that that isn't really what emerged. What emerged was the illusion of democracy in Western uh, nation states. But the real power uh, eventually fell, and we've seen the effects of this in the last few years in, in America and elsewhere in the world, the aristocrats of blood were replaced by aristocrats of wealth. So you have a different kind of aristocracy that still wants to rule. The aristocrats of, of wealth ha are human beings and they have the same ambitions and, and desires to uh, preserve themselves and their families and their wealth against the various uh, dangers that exist in earth existence and uh, um, they can uh, do that to some extent by uh, forming their own associations and that's where you get the conspiracy theories that various people have on the internet that, that have some validity, I think, you know. People get together and they make an association that wants to, to dominate for whatever reasons they have that want to do that. And uh, a lot of times they think they're doing good. In, in my essay called Counter Moves you'll find some uh, discussion of that. And anyway, um, so here we have the situation in the United States and we're going to have a new constitution or we're going to try to have a new constitution. We're going to try to assert ourselves um, as having the right to determine our form of government against those influences which would not want us to have that right. And one of those influences that would not want, want us to have that right is these corporations and their, and their kind of one-sided um, culture uh, that wants to become independent of the human being's ability to um, rule with sanity and with empathy and with conscience the way our lives are run. 
and this is sort of the battlefield, you might say, you know, in a certain sense. You have a raid on one side of the battlefield, the associations of the aristocrats of wealth, and on the other side of the, in the battlefield, um, you have ordinary people who suffer all the time depredations because uh, they're seen basically, uh, and this is in my writing, too, the, the corporate attitude towards uh, people is uh, that we're consumers and workers. That's that's our function. Our function in a society is to buy what they, the crap they want to sell us, and the other part is to make the crap they want to sell us. And um, from this process, uh, wealth is extracted, and it rises up to the aristocracies of wealth, who then use it to uh, live lives uh, that are similar to the lives of the kings and queens of yore. You know, they have all the sex slaves they want or whatever depraved uh, pleasures they're interested in. They, they, you know, they have built uh, $180 million personal yachts with all kinds of servants. They buy huge amounts of property all over the world. They, I mean, they have these enclaves. They now own private armies. And they're not much different than the kings of you know, France and Germany and, and uh, England that caused all these troubles in, in the 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th century before we emerged from that thing. So in a way, the battle that we have now with, the, with trying to develop a new constitution is a reflection of a battle that existed some time ago uh, fought from one direction against aristocracies of uh, uh, blood. Now we're fighting against aristocracies of wealth. And um, the aristocracies of wealth have a problem that they don't want to recognize. Uh, but we can recognize it and maybe use it to, I won't say to our advantage, but we can use it as a lever. And that is that the aristocracies of wealth aren't any more in control of corporate culture than we are. They like to think they are. But the fact is, is that the corporate culture is quite capable of getting away from all of us. And that the aristocracies of wealth will be high-end servants of the, the corporate culture, the culture that, that has no spirit, overriding it, no spirit disciplining it. And we could end up with a world in which is dominated by those kinds of things. And you can read certain science fiction writers, and you will find... Uh, uh, what these systems look like when they're imagined in the future by the science fiction writers, where um, the corporate culture has fully emancipated itself, even from the control of the powerful and the wealthy, who get their privileges and stuff, but they don't run it any more than anybody else does. And that's another reason why we need a second American constitution, where we the people need to stand up and insist that what governs us is what we decide governs us. We get to govern ourselves. That's the point. The corporation doesn't get to govern us. The aristocrats of wealth don't get to govern us. The politicians we occasionally put in place to carry out certain functions in our government, they don't get to govern us. We govern ourselves. That's the fundamental principle that the revolution was fought over. That's the fundamental principle that the second American Revolution has to reignite and reinflame in our souls and in our spirits so that we can put down the abuses. Okay? Good luck and good night.